Hey, it's Organic Bill up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're going to talk about fermented drinks. And so, this is kind of a follow-up from my other video. Nobody liked the music. It was too loud on the other one. But, basically what you can do is, you can make fermented sodas out of typical drinks. Basically, you just need to let it ferment for a week or two. So I always buy the organic uh, apple juice. Now, if you use subacid fruits, subacid fruits meaning um, not like not like citrus fruits, not like strawberries and and other citrus uh, fruits. For instance, probably wouldn't make a good uh, fermented drink with this grapefruit juice. Citrus juices. Um, I haven't really experimented with, but I don't think they ferment as good as apple juice. So I use apple juice. Sometimes I'll use grape. And let's see, this these people here, Langer's has a a grape and a kiwi or a grape and and raspberry that I've used. And so basically, what I do is I will take and I have a uh, a water kefir uh, culture, and I also have a a, t a regular a regular kombucha culture. And so, what I like to do is I will try take a combination of the kombucha culture and the water kefir culture and inoculate my juice with it. And basically, it takes like three or four days, depending upon the temperature. And then pretty soon, you'll see that the the can the uh, bottle will start start to bulge, and you'll know it's fermenting. And then normally, it will stay good for probably a week. If you keep it in the refrigerator, maybe it'll stay good for two weeks. Still, will still have that fermented kind of bubbly uh, consistency to it. So, and then these people here, ideally what you'd want to do is you'd want to transfer it into a, a glass jar and, and then ferment it that way. Because plastic notoriously has the BPA, the stuff that basically causes cancer, produces reproductive issues. And so, these people here actually... Langers produce a non BPA bottle, which is pretty cool. Now, sometimes I can find things like this over at the the grocery outlet for a reasonable price. Um, and so, yeah, that's my fermented drink for today. And this one here has been fermenting for a while, and you can see that it's it's got a little bit of pressure in it got a little bit of pressure in it now you want to look I always look on the labels and then ideally once again you want to get organic because particularly if using apples apples are notoriously high in pesticides if they're not um, organic and you want to look and I bought this stuff at the dollar store Dollar Tree and looks kind of might not be organic, probably not, doesn't say organic, but it looks fairly uh, kosher. And it'll start out something like, you know, you always want to look for filtered water. You don't want anything that's not filtered. So you always want to look for filtered water. Typically these will have ascorbic acid, and when they have ascorbic acid in them, it's going to take a little bit longer to ferment because it's got to sort of whatever eat up that ascorbic acid before it'll start to ferment. Of course, citric acid, you don't you don't want citric acid. Citric, citric, citric acid is like a preservative, basically, and so you don't need that. Um, and I got excited one day, and I saw something look like this over at the Dollar Tree, bought, looked at it, read, read the label, 
Um, you know, no high fructose corn soup. Although I have made kombucha from uh, the Arizona tea, which is, has the uh, high fructose corn syrup. I usually let it, let the kombucha, uh, whatever, ferment for at least a couple of weeks when I use that Arizona Arizona tea with uh, the high fructose corn syrup. But, like I said, one day I got really excited. I saw a bottle look like this. Started reading the label and it said fermented, no, it said uh, filtered water. Um, I didn't see any high fructose corn syrup in it. And got home, started reading the label, and it's got that, what is it? That artificial sweetener stuff, uh, sucralose. So that sucralose is actually a kind of a GMO sugar that you want to stay away from. Uh, whatever it's promoted to help whatever weight losers lose weight, which is just a high, basically the way I see it, it's, it's, uh, it's like a preservative. It's, there's probably also, uh, uh, hidden agendas, but basically, you know, the whole industry is based on the whole idea that, you know, they want everything to set on the shelf for as long as possible and it, and remain tasting somewhat decent. And so a lot of the stuff they put in these things is not good for you because basically your body can't metabolize it, s stores it somewhere off in fat cells that may eventually cause cancer. So, yeah, if you see the sucralose, now I've tried to ferment the stuff with sucralose, the stuff just, I don't know, leaves a bad taste in my mouth, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I have fermented the stuff with sucralose in it. I usually add some other natural juice to it to help it kind of see if it'll change. And then also, my hot tip for today is... MSN. You add a little MSN. I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but methyl sulfate or something like that. It's a dietary supplement. MSN. Broccoli is very high in MSN naturally. But you add a little uh, MSN to your ferment. Once it starts to ferment, add a little bit. And now those little guys just love that stuff. The little bacteria that are they're fermenting it. Just a little bit, not too much. Maybe in a jar like this, you'd want to put in maybe a quarter teaspoon MSM. And I also put in um, a calcium magnesium uh, supplement. I try and get the uh, calcium magnesium uh, powder that does not have citric acid and it's kind of hard but you could probably find this stuff that does not have citric acid in it but anyway yeah that's the tip right there you could probably find uh now you can buy magnesium orotate on ebay which is a, uh and you can also buy calcium orotate on ebay which is a very good source of digestible calcium you might want to try and add to your ferment, adds a little bit more minerals, and I think the bacteria in there love it. Now, I drink this fermented stuff pretty much every day. I, you know, some people, I know that it's probably good to lay off. I do have to lay off uh, the fermented stuff uh, maybe twice a month be, is the way I do it because I'm just so used to drinking the fermented beverages. It seems to help digestion, and so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's my tip for today, and uh, thanks again for watching, rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.